So here in just a moment, I'm going to be interviewing Mike Tong, who is the owner of GMS Industries. Now, GMS makes replacement cylinders like mortise cylinders, rim cylinders, key and knob cylinders, SFIC cores, LFIC cores, and many other ones in a wide variety of keyways. On top of that, GMS is known for their quality. And I personally love GMS cylinders. They do such a great job and they're such a great company to work with. I am really excited to introduce you to Mike and have a great conversation. And I have a feeling that I'm gonna learn something. So here we go. Well, hey, Mike, thank you so much for uh, coming on and uh, chatting with me here for a little bit. Hey, no problem, PJ. Uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, thank you. So, you know, I'm pretty curious. Um, when did you start GMS Industries and does GMS actually stand for anything? Yeah, good question. Uh, we start, the company officially started, uh, incorporated, if you will. Uh, in the in January of 2000, but of course uh, before that, uh, I was in, you know, th th there's a story about that. But I spent about five years prior to that before I get to the point of incorporating uh, GMS. And uh, now you ask me, what is uh, GMS stands for? Uh, so when I started the uh, company. Uh, obviously, uh, we were looking for a name, and at the time I was married, uh, so there was there was me, my wife, and my daughter, and so GMS is really just the uh, initials of our uh, first name. So you have Gloria, that's my wife. M would be Mike, that's me, and then S is Sabrina, and that's my daughter. Very cool. That's, so that's great. That's, that's the name. Yeah. And then that's the time that we uh, we incorporated the company. And then, you know, um, prior to that, uh, we were um, uh, and the, the funny story about that is a lot of people don't know this. Uh, my my family is actually in the uh, bakery business. So my dad has been a baker all his life. And then I, I basically grew up in in a bakery and our family moved uh, from. Uh, Taiwan to Canada uh, in the early 1980s. And then in the early 1990s, uh, my dad had friends visiting from Taiwan to our bakery in Vancouver, Canada. And they said to him, well, you know, the, the economy in Taiwan is doing very well. Why don't you come back to Taiwan and, and have a look at it? And maybe there are some other business opportunities other than you know uh working as a baker for example hmm. and so hmm. so that kind of got started the whole thing uh but to make his long story, but to make a long story short uh whatever he was working on uh didn't end very well and okay. so that's when i graduated from studying uh engineering and we decided well we kind of have to pivot and we i figured after sort of learning a few uh a thing or two about cylinders uh we pivoted and decided well i think we could get into the uh replacement cylinder business and that's that's how gms got started and the rest of it is history wow so uh, up until the point when you started doing cylinders, you didn't like have like any sort of uh, background per se uh, in this in cylinders. That is correct. So I guess you could say I was a pretty quick learner, and so we uh, I got to study how cylinders were. Um, I guess the, the usage of it. At the time, I didn't even know there are so many keyways involved, for example, and the different brands and what's the difference between a five pin and a six pin, for example. Uh, so we learned really quick. Uh, it went from a blank sheet of paper to sort of uh, 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 the most important aspect or the most in important, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, principle that we established for the company was that uh, sure we're gonna make replacement cylinders, 
but we want to make it so that it is exact to the original spec so that you could use your original pinning kit and then you could cut the keys to spec and then uh, and then use our cylinders just like if they were OEM. So 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 that was the first thing we established. Uh, and we always kind of uh, stuck to that idea ever since. And that that helped us a lot. That that really set us apart. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you know, you guys are known for your quality in your cylinders, which kind of, you know, brings me to my next question, um, which is, you know, a lot of brands today um, outsource all of the manufacturing process. And I'm curious, does does GMS outsource that or do, or do you guys um, own the factory or factories that you um, produce the cylinders in? Yeah, that's a very good question. We uh, we we build every cylinder we make. Now we currently have factories in Taiwan, and we also have factory in China. And the way it works, uh, as far as the flow of the products go, uh, is that Taiwan we make uh, quite a bit of the components, the major components, such as the housing, the plug, if you will. Uh, and, and then they would be shipped from Taiwan to China, where uh, we do the plating, the, the, some of the finishes, uh, and then the final assembly, for example. Uh, now, some people ask me, well, do you own the factories in, in Taiwan and in China? And the answer is yes. Uh, we, we, we are very unique in the sense that uh, we are, technically speaking, a, a very small company. But uh, what, what's unique about us is that even though we have locations, you know, in, in the United States, Taiwan, and in China, but we, we make everything we sell, and we only sell what we make. And that's basically uh, how I would put it. Wow, that's very uh, impressive. And, I, you know, I guess that, that kind of makes sense when you, um, you know, own – the factories that your products are being made in, you can really get that consistent quality. You know, over the years, you know, I've, you know, we've, uh, some of the products we buy, sometimes we look at it, you know, and like you can tell, like even the country that they've been made in had, you know, changes throughout whatever, you know, reasons they're switching, you know, factories for. So yeah, for you yeah, guys I to- think, I think what, again, what's important to know uh, for, for our customers is that, uh, in a way, in the big scheme of things, cylinders are not high value products. So when when there are manufacturers out there uh, who wants to get into this business, it, it seems very easy to just go and buy from somebody who know how to make a cylinder. But as you and I know, who, who kind of have are been in the industry for a while, you know, there's a, a lot of nuances and then there's intricacies that you, you don't really you wouldn't really understand until you start using it. And so, um, so we, you know, we're learning all the time. And uh, uh, so, so the, that really helped us to make sure that, that the quality of the cylinders are, are, are there for, for, for our customers. Instead of, for example, uh, I mean, I don't think you, you would, I don't think you would really get that if a manufacturer just decides to buy a cylinder from somebody, for example. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. There's a huge difference between, you know, advertising, you know, uh, this is a, you know, SC one cylinder or a quick set cylinder. That's a difference than like, yes, the key goes in, but how does it actually key up? Right. Yeah. And yeah. There's, yeah. there's a, I mean, at first it seems the same, but it's really massive when, um, you know, a person in the security business goes to key up or master key a cylinder that's not actual, you know, factory specs. Yeah. You mentioned uh, master keying, for example. And that's obviously uh, uh, one of our strong suits. And the only way to make it work properly in a, in a master keying setting is yeah for sure because everything needs to be consistent right so so if you think about the size of the pins the diameter of the pins uh, how they have to kind of work inside this you know nothing huge if you will a small envelope uh they, they do have to be pretty precise so so you avoid interchanging for example uh now 
there are many ways you could cheat uh, to to simply make it work. You could cut the key. Uh, the key cuts could be wider, if you will. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the, the size of the chamber could be bigger. You know, the diameters uh, of the plug versus the bore on the housing. I mean, but but we don't do any of that. We we we, we make it very precise, and then we try to uh, stick to that. And the challenge, of course, is uh, is one thing to make one cylinder, but it's quite different when you have to make you know like hundreds of thousands of them. So. So yeah. that that's uh, that's that that's that's not so easy, especially now that I just mentioned it. Uh, as you know, because you're one of our good uh, uh, full line distributors, um, we have a lot of keyways. So, and then the keyways are also from different brands. So you, you're talking about Schleg brand, you're talking about Quickset brand. They all have different diameters uh, of plugs, and then they could have different spacings. So we, we mm -hmm. stick to that. We don't we don't we don't fudge the numbers. Uh, so that uh, and then that just means uh, in terms of the SKU numbers and then the production uh, part numbers uh, in terms of what we have to track, uh, it kind of blows up uh, very, very quickly once you start adding uh, different brands and different keywords. OK, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as you're saying this, I, I you know, a question popped up into my head, which uh, I don't have the answer to. And uh, maybe you do. Yeah. You know, why, like, the, the quality difference between, like, the die cast, like, I don't know, mm. hot metal style of, like, mortise cylinder, for example, mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to, like, your brass mm -hmm. mortise mm -hmm. cylinder. Why mm -hmm. is there such a huge difference in, like, material mm -hmm. when it comes to um, the ease of use and keen? Uh, is there a real reason behind that? Behind that? Uh, well, if you ask me, I think... I think most of it comes from the uh, the material itself. So the zinc die cast number one is is very soft. So 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 they wear out quickly. So that's number one. And number two, the reason it, zinc is being used is that most likely uh, the housing of a mortise, for example, using a, a zinc cast, is that it was die casted. So then, in order for die casting to work. Uh, they just say you need more room for everything. So very often the holes are bigger uh, and, and, and they are not consistent as well. Because when you die cast, you have to heat it up to temperature. You have to melt it and then it cools down. So I'm, I'm not saying zinc die cast is no good per se. I'm just sure. saying sure. To, to make it so that it works very, very well, it's, very, it's not an easy thing to do. As there's a lot of control involved. So now switching to using brass, for example, you know, brass is a great material for, for making locks. It's not, I mean, it's obviously not as, as hard as steel or stainless steel, but it'll do the job, right? And then mm -hmm. he's, it, it keeps the finish. It, it doesn't rust. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, it just, it's just been proven as a material uh, for, for lock cylinders. In fact, once in a while, you, you would run into some old cylinders that's been made, you know, maybe 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And if you look at the, um, if you look at the housing and the plug, for the most part, they, they would hold up very well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. As you go through that, it makes sense to me why, like, you just get a different experience when, you know, working with those zinc die cast. Uh, yeah, I think, you know, unfortunately... When people go the cheap route, it gave the uh, zinc diecast a bad name because they, you could go really cheap on that. And so when that happens, it, it is just a bad, just a poorly made product. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you could argue, you know, um, you can make a really cheap brass cylinder as well if you don't pay attention to the tolerances involved. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is maybe defending a little bit on the zinc cast casting, because if you really spend the money in it, you can still make a very nice product. But, but like I said, in the beginning, cylinders is not a high value, uh, item. So, so that's, yeah, you, you don't get good quality zinc die cast cylinders. Okay. Yeah, definitely makes sense. 
So, you know, when it comes to with like, you know, cylinders, right? The amount of cylinders that, uh, you know, GMS manufactures and sells is a lot. And I'm really kind of, um, you know, it's, I've always wondered, like, what is the process of keying all of those cylinders look like? I mean, there, there's key to light, key different, right? Key to pairs. I mean, there's a lot going on outside of just yeah. the, you know, housing per se. Um, how, how do you guys do that? Well, luckily in this day and age, they're actually machines for doing that. Uh, so I think. I will uh, see. I will try to find a good clip that I can send to you, so you get an idea of what a machine looks like that does the pinning uh, for cylinders. So uh, basically, you could think of, um, let's say, uh, using Schlage as an example. You got, as you know, you got zero to nine the bottom pins, and you have different length of top pins plus the spring, for example. So the machine would hold each uh, individual pin in a uh, in a barrel so 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 imagine zero to nine you have 10 barrels and you got the top pins so you add to that so so in a setup maybe you will have 15 barrels and then you pre-assemble the cylinder you put it in the fixture and then you kind of go through the stations and it has tubes feeding uh, to the chambers and then and then the, the 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 program uh, uh actually the machine will read the cuts on the key as well and so it reads that it knows what pins to put in and then put in the springs and it caps it and then and then basically uh, in a cycle of about less than 10 seconds then it, it pins up the cylinder so so that's kind of uh a, a efficient way of doing it but that's not to say we do that for all the cylinders because uh, uh, one of these machines would cost quite a fair bit of money, for example. So if it's a product like uh, uh, a slow runner, maybe uh, let's say wiser. We don't do a lot of, we don't do as much wiser as we do in Schleck, for example. So sure. for wiser, then we, we, we pin it by hand. So we have, we have about, uh, in China, we have 10, 10 employees uh, full time and, uh, <laughs> Think of it. I mean, basically all day they just do nothing but pin, you know, dropping the pins, dropping the springs. Wow. So that's yeah, that's doing. crazy. So uh, did I hear that right? In about ten seconds, you have a automated machine that will pin a cylinder. Correct. Yeah. Wow. So it, wow. it, it, it it's it's one of those things. Uh, quite often, you can't even feed it fast enough. Like in other words. You have a pre-assembled. Uh, imagine a pre-assembled mortar cylinder without the uh, a spring cover, if you will. So you know the top is exposed, and then you put it in the fixture, and you slide in the key. Uh, and you know if you're not fast enough, you, you can't even keep up. For example. Wow. It, it it is very cool for somebody who is mechanically inclined. I mean, it just it's pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would absolutely love to see what that looks like. Sure, sure. Um, well, Mike, you know, this has been great. I really appreciate you coming on and kind of talking about uh, GMS. And I I've personally learned um, so much, you know, and I definitely want to tell you, you know, when I started um, – doing what I'm doing now in 2004. And as I was, was trying to build the company and, you know, uh, represent different uh, manufacturing lines, um, GMS, uh, you know, when we finally, when we kind of got to the right size and uh, our, the, our two companies were able to start uh, doing business, uh, it was one of those like really exciting days for me. You know, my dad's a locksmith and I remember calling him up uh, as soon as I got word that we were going um, to mm -hmm. have uh, be a uh, distributor, calling him up being like, dad, can you believe it? We're going to start selling, you know, GMS. And uh, he was excited for me. Right. So it was great. Good to hear. That's, I mean, uh, I, I, one thing I do sort of, uh, let's say one thing I do recognize uh, in doing what we do is that we do hear good things from the actual users. Uh, these are, for example, locksmith professionals who, uh, uh, who, who, who are using our products. And we do hear good things about it. And again, it comes down to that very first principle that we used, 
when we started the company. And that is we, we wanted to make our cylinders uh, to exact OEM specs so that if you already had the pinning kit, you already have your key cutting machine set up for the Sichuan Corbin, you know, uh, we also have Arrow, Quickset, uh, Wiser, for example, even best, right? And, yeah. you know, you don't have yeah. to, you don't have to fudge anything. You just take the pinning kit you have, you drop it in, you'll pin up like the original. And then the challenge, of course, is when you run into uh, Master King. And then, you know, um, really, so far, we, we seem to be very good at doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what I mean, that's what makes, you know, GMS so great, honestly, the company you've built and uh, the consistency that everyone has kind of uh, come to know. Right. Which I think has uh, been a huge part of, you know, your guys' success over the past two decades. Yeah, no doubt. The, the, the quality of the cylinders, again, uh, it comes back to the fact that you could pin them up just like the original. And that consistency, as you mentioned, it's, you know, we, uh, we, 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 we invested a lot in the machineries that we use. And uh, and of course, you know, uh, that is one thing. But of course, we, we've, we've learned a lot over the years. And I think I said earlier, it's one thing to be making one or two cylinders. But but the challenge is very different when you start making hundreds of thousands of cylinders. Yeah, but, you know, we, 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 we worked hard on that. No doubt about it. Absolutely. Well, hey, that's awesome. And, you know, thank you again for coming on. And, you know, so I'm excited. So the next Tuesday, you're going to be uh, coming on live and hanging out a little bit. So I really okay. do appreciate that as well. Looking forward to it. Good stuff, Mike. Well, hey, thank you. Have a nice evening and we will uh, see you on Tuesday. Well, thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Well, hey, I tell you what, that was a great conversation with Mike, I feel very fortunate that I've been able to have him on and I'm looking forward to this next Tuesday having him live on YouTube for our giveaway. So I would really love to know what you thought in the comments below and make sure that you include the hashtag LockBoss to automatically get entered in to win one of five free prizes that we give away every week. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.